So the outline of the talk, maybe we can just turn, I'm, I'm pretty loud, um, is talking about what is semi-infinite programming and some examples. Um, what can you do to solve semi-infinite programming problems in R now? Is it nice? My answer to that is no, it's gross, really gross. So gross that I don't want to even talk about it. Um, the current work is, can it be nicer, which is what I've done in the past two weeks. Uh, and I've taken the very, very, very lazy version. Um, and then future work, can it be nicer, the proactive version, which hopefully I'll convince you or convince one or two people to come and help me do the more proactive version. Because it's nice to work in teams and not isolated by yourself. Okay, so semi-infinite programming is not having a piece of code that is semi-infinite, which might have been confusing on the title given I'm presenting at an R conference, but programming as in the mathematical um, optimization usage. Um, and essentially you have like a standard objective function, f of x, but you have an infinite number of constraints. And the way that infinite, the way the, num the infinite number of constraints are um, provided is through some kind of parameterization. So um, the example I've got here is just g of x of t, and that has to be less than zero for all t in some set for me to have the um, optimum x be found by f of x. So essentially, um, that could be x times t is less than zero, and that has to be true for all t, um, and just for the one x that I'm trying to um, find the optimum solution to. And you can include other constraints too, so standard inequalities and equality constraints. Um, the first example I've got is what I should have done in my honors thesis. So uh, if you do a polynomial least squares regression, um, and you want to include a constraint, some shape constraint, such as monotonicity, so the squiggly line that you're doing always increases. Um, you can formulate that as a semi-infinite program where the constraint is on the derivative. So that subscript x just means the partial der derivative with respect to x. Um, so the partial derivative of the polynomial, um, which is just a standard derivative because usually you have the coefficients fixed, um, is greater than zero for all x in some domain that you want the poly polynomial to be monotone over. And so you might have, this is just some data that I simulated a while ago, you might have a normal um, polynomial, just OL, OLS fit that looks like that, but the region, I don't have a pointer, this region here is um, suboptimal because it conflicts with some contextual information you have, such as maybe these are how some organism grows over time and you know that the organism won't shrink. So why, is, why have I fit a regression where I'm predicting some shrink in the, in the organism? Um, and essentially you want to fix it to something that doesn't have that, uh, that drop there. Um, and that's a really, actually I should make it more dramatic, right? to emphasize it, but usually in practice it is only minor because if the contextual information tell you, tells you that it should be increasing, your um, sampling variation or whatever noise that you have in there is usually not going to be too much away from, from that mean. Um, example number two is set covering. So I've, I've written the mathematics up there, but essentially take some hypersphere in space of, um, I don't think I wrote the dimension, oh, I said it to be three. So this is, take, take some sphere with radius r and center x naught, and you want to find the sphere which has the minimum volume for those two parameters, such that um, it completely covers a square that, I, that runs from um, or ai to bi, so I didn't put actual coefficients in, but Essentially, you want to shrink that circle so that it completely covers the square uh, all the time, no matter what, um, to give the minimum volume. And this, everyone goes, oh, Josh, you could do this so easily. Everyone knows you just get the 
radius to be equal to the, um, or use Pythagoras' theorem to get the radius to be equal to that corner point there, but what if it's not a square? What if it's a much more complicated region? What if it's not just two dimensions? What if it's multidimensional? Also, if you can do it on pen and paper, why can't I do it in R? So there. Anyway, so there's some, there's, there's some iterations there. Um, and there's a bunch of other applications. Um, there's Chebyshev approximation, which is to do with um, getting functions to fit arbitrarily close to other functions. Um, optimization under uncertainty is essentially, in, in some cases, it can essentially be um, optimizing some function where you have like a standard constraint, but the coefficients of the constraint are unknown. And one way of accounting for that, those unknown coefficients is just to bound them on a set. So you could have optimized f of x subject to ax is less than or equal to zero, and you let a vary between zero and one, say. Um, and then there's robotics where you're talking about trajectories and the robot can't move very fast, but it's going to move in a continuous fashion, so you have to kind of constrain um, what it's doing in that way. Okay, so what is it? That was my intro to semi-infinite programming. What's available in R now? There's an API called R Neos, which is uh, a connection to the network-enabled optimization system. Um, it can solve heaps and heaps of um, different optimization problems, and it's Brilliant at what it does, but it's not a very R solution to the problem uh, because essentially you write the problem in AMPL, which stands for, um, I think, a mathematical programming language. You read that text file into R, you submit it to a server, and then you retrieve and use the results in R. I don't like it for a number of reasons. I think it's fine for one go optimizers, but a lot of the time I think dynamically with optimization. I'm trying to do lots of different optimization problems that change. So oh, that's what AMPL looks like. Gross. Um, and uh, so I guess the pros are the server's free. It's on the cloud, so it's high performance. As I said, there's many state-of-the-art optimization solvers, but the cons would be data sensitivity, overkill, I like to work more dynamically. I like to have um, do prototyping in R, so I want to at least start with R, and if I need a bigger solver, I can always push to a server. And it's not really in line with standard optimization in R, so I don't think it's nice, and it's not going to be fit for purpose for, for everyone. Um, so can it be nicer? There are a few packages in R that do quite sophisticated um, optimization. So there's Alabama, RSOLNP, there's NLC Optim, and then there's stochastic methods. Um, and some of the time, semi-infinite programs can actually be converted to use those um, solvers natively in, in R. So the lazy version of solving, solving semi-infinite programs in R is to essentially convert the semi-infinite constraint into what's called the lower level problem. So if I maximize my gx of t with respect to t within my set that I'm worried about this constraint being satisfied for, if my maximum is less than zero, then all the other points in that set will also be less than zero. So by going from an infinite domain to like a singular maximum point, I can make sure that I'm within my constraint set, but um, I can start writing these in the solvers that are available in R. Um, so th there's a, a few caveats to that. You always need to find a global maximum, otherwise you'll end up outside your constrained set, in which case a lot of the solvers will stop working. Um, so if you're doing the maximum, a, a concave um, g of x with respect to t works, and you can also do, you can do well with one-dimensional polynomials because you find the derivative, find the roots, um, and find the global maximum so long as you're on a um, compact sub uh, set. Sometimes it's smooth, sometimes it's continuous, often it's not. You can actually calculate the derivatives of these, of this um, function uh, h with respect to x, which uh, can be nice for some of the um, optimizers that are available. Um, 
But essentially, it's a pretty lazy solution because it's not going to work for everything, and I'm trying to get as much done as possible for as little labor as possible. So the first version of SIPAR, coffee, um, essentially you can create uh, three types of constraints um, with these functions. Uh, inf inequality constraint, so that's the standard semi-infinite program constraint. Inequality constraint and equality constraint. Um, you create a semi-infinite program by combining a, an objective function with those constraints, and then you pass it to solvers that will do the work for you, um, which is kind of, I think, becoming more uh, a more f viable way of doing optimization in R. There's a lot of packages like convex R and um, the prioritize R package as well is doing the same thing, which I was glad to see. I'm definitely doing it very poorly given my time constraints. Um, but essentially, um, you can define these problems in R uh, with the inequalities. So this one is just doing the... Um, it's taking the uh, center point is x minus 1. So I've got a vector, and the first... Um, element of the vector is going to be the radius and the rest is going to be the x naught, the center point. And I want my function f x of t to be between negative infinity and zero, so I want to be less than zero. And that's just the um, L2 minus the radius squared is less than zero. So that was the constraint for the set covering that I put up before. And the bounds, I've just inscribed, a, 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 I've just have bounds on T which draw like a hyper, they draw a cube in three-dimensional space between zero and one on each axis. Um, I coded up the volume of a hypersphere with a function, not too hard. I put it into this SIP um, function which creates the actual semi-infinite programming object. Um, and then I tried to solve. And I had a very scary moment when I was putting this slice together where this was not working um, and started thinking about how much I would have to go through in order to fix uh, where it wasn't working and then I realized my, I was starting my radius less than my square, starting the sphere less than the size of this, the cube and it was just deciding that it was going to have negative coordinates and things because it was starting at an infeasible spot. So always check that your first point is feasible. It's the takeaway from that. Don't stress yourself out. Um, anyway, so it finds um, a sphere with center 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, which is what we would expect um, when you have a sphere trying to enclose a cube where the center of the cube is at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And the radius is 0 0.86, which I think is going to be square root 2, right? Square root squared. No, that doesn't work. Square root of 2 over 2? Anyway, there's some cert in there. Um, so there's a bunch of other lazy improvements that I can do or we can do if you want to come and help me out with this project. So I still have to add the special function to handle univariate um, polynomials because at the moment, the lower level problem is just, um, just generated dynamically with a call to optim blindly, so it doesn't check if, there's, if it's convex or concave. So um, there's, the user needs to make sure that what they're putting into the program makes sense. I need to add solvers. As I did the list of solvers because they're the ones that I want to add in um, first. I want to be able to let users um, have solvers for the lower level problem themselves, and that way they can kind of like combat problems with funny um, lower level problems. And um, for quadratic objective functions or other objective functions that are quite nice, you can actually reduce the SIP by just looking at the boundary of the constraint space. Like there's ways you can get faster solvers without. Um, resorting quite to the infrastructure that I've put in the back end of this package. Um, but it, it, we can be more, much more um, 
pro more proactive than that. Um, we can use the R optimization infrastructure. We can do piping like we saw in the um, prioritize R package. Um, I should be doing a much better OO implement, so object oriented implementation, but I'm not. Um, and then once we've exhausted all that we can do with um, converting to a low level problem, I need to get my act together and learn more about um, true semi-infinite program solvers and implement them in probably a lower level language to make them faster. But I haven't found any free C or C++ source code for the problem, which is kind of sad given it has 128,000 hits on Google Scholar, but that's okay. Um, I also want to have functions to investigate the geometry of the SIPs, which I think I was talking about before, and also to generate the starting points so you don't fall into the trap of getting really stressed out because your solver isn't working when it's a really simple problem and it really should. Okay, thank you. Yes, die. So um, for those who are listening at home, Di basically said, help me out, or else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>